Today on Grim3D, we're going to be installing a Y-axis built tensioner on my D9 Monster. Stick around. Well, I have the printer upside down to show people my 92 millimeter Noctua fan installation. I wanted to show people this belt, the Y-axis belt and what Juan Hao uses for a tensioner. So this little clip right here kind of looks like the inside of a clothespin is meant to keep some tension on that belt. But in most of the printers, in fact, this belt right here is, doesn't have a whole lot of tension going. I mean, it's not bad, but it's, it could be better, I guess. But this, this tensioning spring right here I don't know that that's really helping my situation out here because I'm sure as the print bed goes one direction it flexes but as it goes the other direction it kind of doesn't flex because it's pulling mostly on the top rather than the bottom and I can feel just right here and it might be because the printers upside down here but I can feel right here that this belt that's in the back is actually feels tighter than the belt that's in the front which is weird seeing as how they're the same belt. So today we're going to remove this spring-loaded tensioner right here and we are going to replace it with a printed and installed belt tensioner that goes on the rear 4040 extrusion and then this printout allows us to monitor and adjust the tensioning of the belt by ourselves rather than leaving it up to this little spring doohickey. All right, let's get going. First thing I'm gonna do is remove this. And now with that off of there, and my belt tension, actually took a little bit of a dip there, not much, but with that off of there, I'm going to tip the printer back over and so we can get to the back of it. Stay tuned. So now that I've got the printer right side up again, here is the little idler pulley that we need to remove. We are gonna reuse this bearing pulley that's in here. And this is pretty much just screwed into the groove of this 4040 extrusion. So we'll just remove that real quick, an Allen wrench. Now that's interesting, these aren't even connected. I would think it'd be much more rigid if they were connected along the bottom there. They're not even connected, that's weird. So, anyways, this is what we're after. So here's the equipment that just came off of the printer over there. I'm going to finish removing these T-nuts. kind of get them out of the way now. Pull this apart. Okay, now I have this all broken down. Looks like there is a plastic spacer on one side of this but not the other and this is actually a bearinged idler pulley right here so I'm going to so I'm going to give the bearings in here a quick shot of this liquid bearing it's pretty good stuff I use it on a lot of my jobs here get that maybe worked in a little bit there Get a little bit on this side. We're getting a little bit of that. It's really weird. That actually feels better already. Anyways. So, we are actually not going to use any of this 
stuff except the bearing and I don't know if we need that little spacer. You would think that I'm going to reuse the T-nuts, which I really would, except the, the belt tensioner outer housing, the holes that are down through here are not big enough to take those screws. Those are five millimeter screws. And this is designed for four millimeter screws. So all of this is just gonna go be saved for later in case you need it. I'm always big on hanging on to stuff in case you need it. Now this, I'm gonna start with mocking this up right here. Of course, to get the belt on this idler pulley, I'll have to pull it apart back over on the machine to slip the belt on, but I want you to see what it's supposed to look like. And right here, I have all of the hardware that I need to make this happen. Uh, these are T-nuts that I printed that, that require a four millimeter nut and that also work with a four millimeter screw that will actually fit down through these holes. So, and then here's the inner carriage. So this is how this goes together. The first thing you would do actually is put the belt um, on this idler pulley but to mock it up here, we're gonna skip that step. So I have this four millimeter, oh, this is a five millimeter actually, five millimeter screw that I'm gonna put in here. Which means I need my bigger Allen wrench for the five millimeter. Go through there, and remember, I would put the belt in here first, of course. So I'm going to go through there into this nut right here, which with this design actually has a little hex slot for the nut so it holds it nice and still. And I want to make sure um, that I get that tight but not too tight. I don't want it to impede the rolling of this idler pulley. And then this would go with the belt in here. And these other five, these are five millimeter by 30 millimeter screws. They go in through here and the nut is placed on the inside there. And it also has a hex pocket that it goes in. Same on this side. The nut in the little hex pocket right there. And we screw that in, making sure it threads into the nut. And then these would go through all the way. And as you can see, the end of this screw right here is going to go into a little pocket that is designed in the end to keep these 30 millimeter nuts straight in there. Now, without the tension of the belt, this kind of slips around in a way that it shouldn't when it's on the machine, but there's the assembly. And then with my four millimeter screws, I can put on my T-nuts, ready to go in the machine. So there's your assembly. Now let's put it on the machine. Now, the first thing I want to do is make sure that my placement here is correct 
from left to right. Um, I need it the same distance probably from this edge that my drive gear is on the motor. So I'm going to measure the motor's drive gear. I'm going to measure the center of it. So the center of my motor's drive gear is 12 and 3 eighths from the edge of this 40 by 40 extrusion. So we're looking at 12 and 3 eighths, which is right there. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that. And remember, you can adjust this later because it's just held into the 4040 extrusion with T-nuts, which we probably will do a final inspection when we've got it in and make sure everything is running true. So now I'm gonna go ahead and center this on the mark that I just made. As I tighten these T-nuts down, I wanna make sure they twist properly within the channel slot so that they're sideways and that one I can see right through there. You may not be able to see it, but I can see that it twisted properly. And this one, I'm gonna need to get a little light down in there. And I can see that it twisted properly as well. So I can go ahead and tighten these down. Don't probably have to kill these, but I am gonna give them a little bit of torque so that they can hold true. Now I did print this on the Prusa. It is printed out of PETG. I did print it fairly solid with probably five perimeters or so, but it is not, I mean, it's solid on the edges here, but it is not entirely 100%. I guess I could have printed it 100%. That would have been fine, but that is pretty solid locked in there. So now I'm gonna pull my belt up and this is gonna be tricky because I don't have enough hands and I'm trying to make it so people can see what I'm doing. I'm going to actually put the belt in there, get my screw started through the center of that bearing. And once it gets through to the other side, I'll put my nut in its little hex pocket. And I'll get this on there and not super tight. Make sure that it is able to turn. That's too tight. Okay, it turns fantastically. And I'm going to set that in there where I can set up the rest of my tensioner put these through but remember I've got to put a nut in that little hex pocket there we go that one's through make that so it at least holds it for me a little bit and then Put this one through and get my nut in the hex pocket. I hope I don't drop that because I would hate for it to go down in the 4040 extrusion and then I would have to dig it back out. So I hold that in with the Allen wrench a little bit. Hope that this is able to start the threads. There we go, got it started. Gonna pull this up tight. Feels like I got decent tension going. Now I can't really get my camera back in there to give you a bird's eye view, but I'm now going to push the bed back and forth and make sure that the belt runs true. I want it, I don't know if you can see that right here, I want it to stay in the center of that pulley and so far it is not so I'm going to tighten up this side a little bit and then move it back and forth a little bit more. It's 
still not in the center. Tighten this up a little bit more. Now it's off the other side and I've got pretty good tension going, but I'm going to give this one a little bit of a tweak like that. A little bit more. It's finally coming off of the edge there. I'll give it maybe another eighth of a turn. Now it seems to be running quite straight in the center of that idler pulley. That is under the force of me pushing the bed back and forth. It is not under the force of the motor. So now I'll fire up the printer and see if I can get the printer to act the same way. So now that I have the printer on and running and everything's good, we will check out and see about the printer moving under its own power and see if that belt stays centered on that wheel. So it looks like the belt is staying centered on that pulley, that idler pulley. It looks like we've got a little bit better tension. I guess that could be a little bit tighter, but we'll see how that works with our next print. And it looks like we have a success. So looking online, I can see that people recommend replacing those wonky spring-like Wan Hao belt tensioners. But to tell you the truth on this one, I'm just gonna have to wait and see. I don't know if this is really the most fantastic way of doing things or if it's just gonna warp over time. PETG is fairly tough, it's not ABS, and maybe I should have printed it in ABS, but I don't know, we'll see. Hopefully that'll stay nice and tight, hopefully it'll stay true, and maybe that will help my gigantic bed as it moves back and forth not have so many uh, inconsistencies, which is, I think, what I'm seeing a little bit of in my prints. So. That's it for this episode of Grim 3D. Remember, subscribe if you'd like, leave us a comment, just remember to keep it civil. Smash that like button, ring that bell, and we'll see you out there.